So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a distillation, a fractional distillation in particular, with a Vigru column. For those of you who might not be familiar with a Vigru column, it is essentially a glass column without any kind of jacket, and it actually has small pointed uh, prongs of glass sticking out into the middle space of the column. Those allow for condensation points for the uh, mixture of solvents that you're distilling to drip back to the original container. So we're doing a fractional distillation, which just means that some of the distillate, or sorry, of the uh, solvent mixture, rather, will go up the column and then come back, and it won't really make it all the way, versus a simple distillation where virtually everything makes it over the neck of the top of the distillation, or the distillation head, and you get over into the condenser and you collect the distillate. So all a distillation is, is the separation of two solids. You have a mixture of solids or of liquids, and the difference between them primarily is the boiling point. And so the boiling point is going to be created and caused by all the different intermolecular forces within those liquids. And so those liquids, because they're a little bit different, are going to have slightly different boiling points at atmospheric pressure, which is what we're running this distillation at. You can always run distillations that are going to be higher temperature and very low pressure in order to lower their boiling points. But for now, we're just going to be running um, this at roughly one atmosphere, wherever our elevation is, uh, about 760 torr, one bar, one atmosphere, that kind of thing. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up our distillation apparatus uh, before we try to pour any solvent anywhere. So what we're going to take is we're going to take this round bottom flask and we'll place it into the bottom of this mantle. You're going to make sure that you get really good contact with the mantle, otherwise you will have very slow distillation and that will be frustrating uh, more than it is useful. It is good to have a distillation that's not going too fast, but it's going too fast, but the stuff is going too fast. You want to be able to run it fast enough to maintain your sanity. So the important thing that you do next is you are just kind of fitting everything together. So you want to use a little bit of, um, in most cases, you're going to use a little bit of grease. Since I'm going to add our solvent, which is pretty nonpolar, similar to the grease, to this later, I'm gonna actually forgo the grease for the moment and then I'm gonna add the grease later. Just gonna see how everything fits so I can assemble everything securely. So next I'm going to place the distillation head at the top here. And that's gonna give you an idea of roughly where I need to place my condenser and the angle I need to place it at. You want to be really gentle with the condenser mostly because the condenser is jacketed and it has really high potential to break um, and is small and delicate. So the less pressure you put on it, the better. And that should allow you to basically put it where you need it. Okay, so this is a little bit high, so I'm gonna lower this a little bit. It can sometimes be a little hard to guess where everything's going to fit perfectly, so you want to be gentle and, and patient with fitting everything into place. Okay, I'm going to move this back a little so it's resting on the finger. Just going to move this up a little. That's good enough. Um, I would usually call for something that maybe a little bit more secure than this, but we don't really need to secure it too much until the actual reaction has begun. You want most of these joints to be gas tight so that you don't lose any of the vapors through the joints because you're gonna be producing lots of vapors. Um, and if you place one of these plastic joint connectors, each of these joints, 
that's going to enhance the stability and the fit of the entire apparatus also. We'll do those once we are actually ready to collect this lid. So the last part that you're gonna need is you're gonna need the adapter. The adapter you can actually place at whatever angle is convenient for your collection apparatus. Um, but usually it's best to keep it as vertical as possible. And that's what I'll be able to do where this distillation head is currently sitting. So because the, the distillation head is pointing the condenser down here, I can actually collect pretty effectively into this graduated cylinder and everything is where I need it. So I'm gonna gently disassemble this. And I'm gonna to try to leave this where it is. So I'm just gonna pull it gently to the right. I don't wanna adjust the height of it too much. Be very gentle on these glass joints. They can break quite easily. So one thing I did not explain very well to begin with was this is the thermometer that we're gonna be using. And an important note on the thermometer is that it should be sitting a little bit lower than the actual turn of the distillation head. That's because you want the vapor coming out of the, out of the column from the mixer to be heating up this uh, thermometer so we can know exactly what temperature the vapor inside of this distillation apparatus is. And you can monitor that temperature usually along this thermometer. Now, if you have, let's say, a lower, uh, a lower boiling point for your uh, mixture, Let's say if you have, um, let's say DCM or something that boils the room temperature, you might need a different setup because currently most of the temperatures below 60 are completely covered by the top of this um, distillation adapter. So that the thermometer adapter here is covering all of it because it allows a little bit of traction through a gasket um, to hold that thermometer in place in the right spot. You want to make sure the thermometer is not too high up. So that's something that would be worth considering for let's say a lower boiling point setup but if you have anything over 60 degree boiling points which is both of the uh, boiling points we have here it should allow you to see pretty well the boiling point that you can track as you measure the volume that's coming out of the distillation apparatus so now i'm going to actually pour our distillation mixture together so these are actually perfectly well separated compounds by themselves like you know, it seems like a very redundant practice to take two pure compounds and mix them together intentionally to distill them which multiple distillations would give you a more complete distillation uh, or a more, more complete separation of these two types of molecules but uh, this is just for practice right so we're going to take 30 milliliters of the hexane and I'm gonna just pour them here as carefully as could be. Definitely wanna work in the hood. A lot of these compounds are gonna be volatile and potentially toxic, carcinogenic. And just a little bit there. I'm going to take a little bit of toluene and we can put it in the same exact graduated cylinder. same graduated cylinder because they're going to get mixed together anyways. This is pretty close to 30 milliliters. I'm just going to pour that in here. I'm going to pour slowly because you don't want any of the solvent to get into the mantle. That could cause a fire. Thankfully, there's no open flame, so that helps a lot. And then, finally, what we're going to do is we're going to grease the 
male joint on this column. Next, I'm going to grease the thermometer adapter joint. Less grease is always more when it comes to these kinds of things. You don't want to over grease your joints. It's just going to result in contamination, which wouldn't be so bad in this case because it'd be hard for that stuff to get all the way to the graduate cylinder through the whole apparatus, but just good practice to avoid using too much grease. Grease there. Just enough to cover the surface on one side. And you can spread it around by twisting the joint. The more clamps, the merrier. <clears throat> you want to make sure you're not putting too much pressure on anything here. The nice thing about the grease, too, is it'll kind of hold stuff in place. It's a little sticky, so it helps you sort of reposition things instead of working with dry joints. Dry joints are not as fun that way. All right, looks like we have everything directed as we need to. So we have the flask, we have the micro column, we have the distillation head with the thermometer adapter. Everything is snapped into place, nice and neat. Then we have the condenser and we have our Lamp there as well. So the last thing we need is the distillation adapter. Okay, so you want to make sure that you definitely put a uh, clamp on this joint because this can slip off very easily. And you want this to be secure. Good to go. So I'm going to get my collection apparatus or my uh, collection graduate cylinder in place. Everything looks great. Um, you want to make sure that everything is secure. It doesn't need to be bomb proof. It just needs to be as secure as possible. And you want good contact with the bottom of your flask so that you're actually going to uh, get a strong conduction of heat. All right, so now, once everything's good, there's one more thing missing, and that is what? Does anyone know? So boiling chips, you should put them in before. I just realized I was missing them now. Um, so I'm going to <laughs> have to disassemble this a little bit. I think it'll fit through the top. This is not an ideal approach, but it can work. If you're working with a complicated column here or a bubble plate, uh, you are going to have no ability to get any of those boiling stones in there, so you want to make sure that you don't even try. You're just going to lose them. They're going to get stuck in here somewhere. Okay, so we have virtually everything set up here. We have the boiling stones. We have the mixture of toluene and hexane. We have not turned on the heat yet. You shouldn't turn on the heat until you turn the water on because you want to make sure that you're not creating a bunch of extra vapor has nowhere to go but um, out the exhaust or into your lungs and you have everything you need to set up um, and we can actually just flip this on turn on the cooling water and the system will be pretty much ready to go and now we wait all right, so everything is set up. We've got our reflux condenser going. We've got a little bit of water going in from the bottom and leaving the top. That's always how you want to do it. You never want to go the opposite way. You're going to get weird bubbles going on. Um, you also have the mantle on, and the mantle is going to be heating the bottom of this flask, creating vapor. You want to turn the mantle on maybe a little bit low at first just to see how powerful it is if you're not used to it. But once you notice that it's not really picking up in, in heat, you can gently tap the inside of it. Uh, you can ramp up the temperature if your distillation isn't going very quickly. Um, we have a pretty powerful mantle here, so that's not gonna be much of a problem. I have it sort of set at medium heat. 
You can also take a look up here at this uh, thermometer. You can see whether the, the thermometer is operating at any kind of higher elevated temperature than what you started at. It's nice and snug and airtight up here. So we're looking for a temperature of roughly 65 degrees. Uh, so once you see the drips begin to form on, this, on the tip of this thermometer, you know that you're in business. Once the distillation is actually going, the idea of this Vigru column to do a fractional distillation is that some of this vapor is going to go up and it's going to collect and condense on this thermometer and then it's going to go back down. So the more of this vapor that gets sent back, the more likely that the stuff that actually makes it across is going to be the first fraction that you're interested in. The first fraction of the vapor that we're going to be looking for is going to be the hexane. A good advantage of having a fractional distillation versus a simple distillation is you're going to actually see a much larger portion of the toluene that's sneaking up as well, leaving going back down. And you're only going to get mostly hexane coming through, which is going to be the whole point here. It's almost like distillation works. <laughs> That's 70. Perfect. So as you can see, when we got to 30 milliliters, roughly, we're starting to Get closer to the bottom of that flask. You definitely want to make sure that you keep an eye on that when you get to this point because if you let it boil past this point, it could get drier and drier and then eventually completely dry out and just get way hotter. But as you go to the top of this, you see the thermometer has gone from 70, where it was kind of hanging out for a second, um, up to almost 90 at this point. 110 is the boiling point of the toluene, so we're going to be kind of expecting it to get near there but not quite um, but we are moving along this is only taking a few minutes so this thing is really cranking obviously if you want higher precision and more purity you would want to go a little slower this thing is really ripping right now